Towers of Doom! Alright guys, we are back with the Masters Clash. We got Towers of Doom coming up next. Another best of two. The Bang Bush going up against the Masters Clash Academy. Now, once again, we are in the group stage now. So through the qualifiers, we have determined eight teams that are now participating in the group stage. It's a full round robin, so pretty much like a mini league with the top eight teams. And each team, like, again, it's a round robin. So we have a best of two between each team, which means that if you win two of the matches, you get oh, two, both maps, you're getting three points. If you tie with your opponent, each team gets one. And if you lose, you get nothing. And so with a round robin, we're determining who are the top teams there. There's a gauntlet later on, too. And some of the teams through that entire process are then qualified for the main event, which takes place in Paris. And there's 12,000 euros on the line so this is literally the first play day so to say and we're now going to figure out which team which teams are starting to establish themselves up at the top of the food chain so the bang bush is definitely one of those teams that you would expect to do well here now it is still the easter weekend and that already had an impact on some of the previous matches that we casted because some of the players just couldn't make it and well family obligations whatnot so right now ty is subbing in on the blue team side yeah, and i'm very curious about the, how the masters clash academy is going to do here because they had some very interesting games in uh, the qualifiers and did do a lot better than many many people anticipated but can they really take down the bang bush that's the question at Towers of Doom, is Hanzo getting banned or is he get locked in quickly? Because you have bishops on the blue team and, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> again, the guy is not by any means a Hanzo one-trick, but it is undeniable that his Hanzo is absolutely incredible and has a massive, massive impact. So, yeah, we'll see. The Haka gets picked first. And, yeah... Do you pick Hanzo away or do you let it through? Because if it doesn't get picked in the first slot, it will definitely be picked in the 2 or 3. So they go for Brightwing instead. We got Blaze for the side lane. Very solid side laner for them. Can easily deal with the Haka too. Has the rotation between the middle and the top that you need to lock the experience in and give the four man a bit more freedom in the way that they're playing it out. But yeah. Okay, what are we getting here? Anduin and Hanzo. Shocking, I know. Hanzo being played. Can't believe it. By bishops? Total novelty. <laughs> no, again, his Hanzo is insane. His Hanzo is crazy good. I'm more surprised that he wasn't banned. To be honest. It's not the only one that you want to target ban a little bit, but he's definitely one that has a huge impact always with the arrows and everything else that they're getting there. So, yeah, I don't know. But okay, so we got Johanna. Banned out now on the front line. There's still plenty up. You can go for Muradin, for example. Could be something that the Masters Clash Academy is doing themselves, though. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, it, you could ban out even more main tanks. <laughs> but then you limit your own pool pretty heavily. <laughs> okay. Alright, so, Zeratul. I mean, if you get a Zeratul in this game, then you can really start to threaten uh, threaten bishops. I'm more con uh, like I'm honestly interested to see what Ty is going to play because we don't see Ty all that often, and Ty was really known for his Zeratul, for his Tracer. He doesn't appear in this many games anymore, but still, we got Mirrodin now for the red team. That was always an option for the blue team too. So when they started to ban Jojo. That's the one that I pointed out because Mirrodin is great on this map and he can set you up with a Storm Bolt. But we still have, I mean, Diablos, for example, still up. So you got plenty of tanks at the front line they can still play around with. So, yeah. But yeah, we need the main tank and we need a bit more damage. Tie on Vala and we get Tyrael. I can deal with that too. Nice, Tyrael. I'll settle for that. But that leaves us with Cookie. The last pick for our first map in the best of two here at the Masters Clash. And the MC Academy. 
They still need some more damage. They could good front line. A lot of stuns, a lot of CC, Brightwing, Blaze, Muradin. And here is Genji, the old school combo with Li Ming and Genji. Let's go everybody! Towers of Doom, map number one. Bangbush versus the Masters Clash Academy! On the left side, the blue team with Swam Grotta on the Haka. We got Skok on Teriel, Bishops on Hanzo, and Tai with a multi-shot build on Vala. I mean, come on Tai, what is this? Yeah, it, no balls play right there. I expected Tai to go for the good old school auto attack now, showing just like the god skills, but no, we get multi shot. Henning is playing Anduin over on the master on the side of the Masters Clash Academy. We got Vedders on Blaze, come on bear on Murden, Cookie on Genji, we got Nagrom on Brightwing, and the Panda Colada is playing Li Ming. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, Tai was one of the few players that already played Vala b back in the day, right? Before Vala received a couple of buffs, especially to her hit point pool. When she was super, super squishy, Tai was one of the few that still played her with only a single support. That was way before Blizzard revamped the Creed of the Hunter. And he did it well, so his micro is usually on point. And he's really solid on those auto attack styles too. So I'm slightly disappointed that despite the fact we only have a single support for them, he didn't go into an auto attack style. Simply because I wanted to see how he's going to perform with this. Doesn't mean that his multi-shot build cannot absolutely murder. And honestly, I expect him to have a very big impact on the game. But that would have been cool to see. We don't see him often enough these days. So, yeah. But yeah, either way, so for now we have with level 1 talents, nothing shocking, honestly. Anduin went over into the light well. Uh, cookies coming in. Oh, they're trying to invade. Uh, blue team is getting aggressive already. Bishops is jumping out. Still get some damage in. They're about to steal the camp away. Oh no! They did all the work and then Cabo Bear just took it. Not like this. And they nearly lost Tyrael too. Ty is low, gets polybombed, and gets away. But I gotta say, that was a little bit wild. I mean, they fought for the camp, and then while they are fighting on it, it seems like everybody just decided at the same moment in time, is like, what if we just move away from it and let them have it? And, well, the MC Academy said, thank you very much for doing all the work. And we're gonna take that now. So, we got five stacks for Vala. Our one-on-one -on -one lane has been established all the way top side. We currently have down here level four talents kicking in as the two teams are continuing with the rotation. And it seems like the Haka might be in a bit of trouble. Not too much. Gets the drag on uh, Brightwing. Has to pop his essence, though. And is buying a lot of time for the team to take their own pumpkin camp. So, at least that's the good news there. With level four, we now also get the piercing light. What is piercing light, by the way? What does it even mean? Is that like a laser? Does Anduin has a la have a laser? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Okay, so... Tai, careful! Genji wants the kill! And they can save her! Vala is still alive. Told you they should have gone for auto attack, right? I mean, he's a survivor. He doesn't even die here. Gets the stacks together now on his multi-shot, sitting at 11 already and just yoloing it out. Triple altars up on the map, top left, top right are going to be exchanged and the battle for the well, altar at the bottom of the map is playing out as we speak. But yep, here we go. Interrupt attempt, that one didn't work out. So two altars, to one in favor of the bag bush. Blue team is off to a banging start. <laughs> so, uh, but, same time now, we got level 7 talents sneaking up slowly and steadily. It's honestly a bit of a slow approach here towards the game from both of them. We had the initially aggressive movement by Bangbush, but ever since they lost that camp, they didn't make any crazy plays just yet. Now the camp is up another 10 seconds, so they could try again. But first, the fight is happening, and maybe they can get a kill here. This time they go for right wing, and that's a dead fruit fly. And with a fruit fly dead, they can get the camp for sure. Without a support, a hundred percent. Level seven, by the way, the frost shot here for Vala. So no hot pursuit, frost shot for Vala. And we also now get the feeding frenzy, and that is giving them potential damage at the bottom. Uh, they can poke Kamabear down a bit, but he's still keeping those pumpkins in here, so no problem. 
Yeah, and I'm a little bit curious to see how this is now going to uh, work out. I mean, level 10 abilities hit. Because so far, Vala is doing a really nice job too. And gets another kill here. Yes, Brightwing is dead for the second time already. So that's two kills to zero. And both of those deaths on the support. But now that Blaze has fallen, it seems like the Master Slash Academy is starting to be a bit in trouble down at the bottom. With the next double altar, I would still think that we're getting a, an even trade between the two teams. But you can't deny that there is a bit of a momentum spike now for the Bang Bush as they are getting into a much better position. And Vala is already at 14,000 damage. Now Genji is not looking too bad either. He's at 16k, so good for him. Yeah. But they have a half level lead now. They got the half level lead. Shots are fired. Brother against brother. And has to jump away because Brightwing was coming in and you can't just sit there and wait for the Polymorph in a situation like that. You're gonna be punished and you know it too. But talking Brightwing, that's another kill. Jesus, that's three kills against the Fruit Fly. They're dealing with that infestation real nicely. Trashwing is dead. They're trying to go for Genji too. Vala is still soloing at the bot lane. But boy, that is starting to get nasty. Svangrotta with good drags on his tongue. So well played. And now they have level 10 abilities. So yeah, good for them. And with that, we get the arrow. We get sanctification. Got the engage with the light bomb still. And Vala hasn't made a choice yet. But Tai is just crushing here. So yeah, playing it out against the rest of the team too. Arrow misses. They get the kill on Muradin though. Mirrodin is dead, so is Liming. Oh boy. Guys, it's a pain train and it is headed towards the red team. They are in a huge amount of trouble. They're losing bot lane control now. They have not gotten a single kill yet. And they are more than a level behind. That level 10 just triggered an insta attack by the bang bush. And they are doing fantastic. So, not bad. This is a moment where I'm a bit worried for the MC Academy. Now, they got level 10 abilities, so maybe now they can fight back. Yeah, <laughs> the camp again stolen. And this is a little bit annoying. The blue team, that's happened the second time now, that they moved in for the camp, they were able to more or less take it, and then this happens. Insta move against the stray from Vala. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I probably assumed that Brightwing didn't have the polybomb anymore. But that was a quick one. 31 stacks on his level 1. And they have a solid lead now. Is he gonna get the interrupt? Yep, he does. So they can still fight for it. 5 bell towers to 3 of course. So that's the next one. And Vala is still stacking. Still stacking and still getting the wave clear in too. Yeah, careful. This is a double. Polymorph. Vala. Yeah, and they get the five shots and they go for come on build the arrow and the kill nice Yeah, good job So by now we have a va how much damage does he have now? 26,000 easy top damage for Hanzo 24,000 for Vala gets her second place seven kills to zero level 13 talents Yeah, this is one-way street heroes of the storm that we're watching now we have Gloom on level 13 for Vala, so Tai is already mitigating the damage that Li Ming can dish out a bit. And he's still solo defending down at the bottom of the map. Panda Colada should be able to get this one eventually, since he can poke this. Uh, Tai gets attacked, it's good hits in, oh my god! The solo kill, the double kill! You monster! Tai with the monster play! Check this one out, have a look at this one. So he sits in the bush, gets the immediate move out with his multi shot and then strafes it up. There's nobody there for the interrupt and he gets two kills out of it. Drops both of the damage dealers. Nine kills to zero. Perfect trap. Great damage by him. And full control of the map still. And of course they're pulling even further ahead in experience here. By now they nearly have a two level lead over the opponent's team. And with the double altar popping up, it could potentially be 10 shots that they're firing against them if they can lock in both of them. So yeah, nicely done. Now the hits still keep coming. Arrow, long distance, and they connect it. Making the play for Blaze. Li Ming is dead. It's a total disaster. They get murdered. Absolutely murdered. 10 kills to zero. Not a single kill at this point for the MC Academy. 
Holy hell. Yeah, this is not a PG-13 game. Uh-uh. I'm not gonna be responsible for any lasting damage that is caused to uh, to miners here. So I'm just saying. At this point, they're coming in with another potential kill on Tyriel, and there it is, the kill. Tyriel is dead. That's the first one, actually. That's the first one that Genji was able to take down. Sanctification has been interrupted, so Tyriel is dead. Insta report, by the way. Insta report. The first one that the MC Academy can take down. You gotta report behavior like this. Now, the altar is still up, and they haven't given up on it yet. There's pumpkins at the bottom of the map that will hit a few more. And there's the second kill. Anduin is dead, too. All right. They're coming back, everybody. They're getting a triple kill out of this. But I don't... And Bright being died. Of course, Bright being died. But I think that's another three shots fired, too. Oh, yeah. So, 29 against 15 points, but they can retake. So, they can try and move in. Reclaim this one. 39,000 damage for Vala now, 32,000 for Genji, Hanzo, tied with Vala pretty much. Maybe this game is going to become a little bit more interesting here, but right now it's still the blue team that has the advantage. But the gap got nearly closed, if you're just looking at the experience for a moment. The gap is nearly closed, it's 4-4 to four bell towers now, so yeah, they're getting there. Might take them a while. They're making the right moves now. Okay, so it's all about the camps again. Taking another set of pumpkins. Boss is obviously still up too. Could theoretically be taken later on as well. Yeah, now. They're making moves with Vala's level 16. Arrow is in. Vala gets the damage out with the order attacks at this point. Sanctification has already been utilized. Common Bear is low. And those Mantica, Manticore shots, they do hurt quite a bit so the bell tower has been reconverted they got it very quickly 12 kills to 3 Vala has 54 stacks now on her level 1 so those multi-shot hits they are definitely connecting and hurting a lot yeah 56 stacks Vala's getting very very good damage out with this very good damage so yeah and it, there are always cluster situations where two or three heroes of the MCA Academy are in the same spot and Tai is just crushing that. So now all the way up at the top, they're trying to go for the Haka. They might just get the kill here even. X-Strike, Essence had to be popped. Can they interrupt right wing? No, they cannot. Four shots fired. Yeah, this is a trade in Bell Towers. Top left, bottom right. Genji is dead, and now they're trying to go for another kill, but do they have the stun or any kind of slow? They have the arrow, and they use it, and here comes the follow-up for Blaze, and they is dead as well. Yeah, nicely done. The Bang Bush crushing, absolutely murdering them now. One level lead established again, 53,000 damage by Hanzo. They can go for another Bell Tower conversion easily. Red team has moved down to the bottom of the map in an attempt to retake the uh, bell tower. So it's a bit of a ring around the rosy play. But they are already pushed back as Bishops moves in together with Skok. And even Swam Grotta is here. So it's five bell towers to three after all. And I guess the Haka could now start to waddle towards the top and aim to retake their own bell tower. I mean this one has just recently been claimed. So still a chance to bring this one back. Camps are also still available. Blaze isn't here, so this one has to be given up by the MC Academy. And they're starting to come in from the side. Bell Tower at least has been claimed, so good for them. But of course, there's the pumpkins, and Brightwing is dead again. Only a dead fruit fly is a good fruit fly. Yeah, Brightwing is honestly getting murdered in this one. Every single time she blink heals in, it feels like there's an immediate reaction. The arrow kill by Bishops. There's a reason why Hanzo gets banned when Bishops is in the game. There's a reason for that. He gets the arrow kill against Li Ming and then they're taking Blaze off the stun that he executed. So once again, Bishops is beasting it on Hanzo. I would be surprised if they don't address Hanzo in game number two. I would be really shocked. At this point, you would assume that, yeah, teams finally learned. Vala going into the far flight quiver here. Shots are fired. Core goes down to three points now. And since the boss is still up, they can make a play for this one, which is exactly what's happening here. 
There's the sanctification. Playing it absolutely safe. Muradin is coming in. Very safe, by the way. So safe that they used the Sanct even before heroes were present to fight them. But with Brightwing dying again for the sixth time and Genji dying too, the lead in the series goes to the Bangbush as they win Towers of Doom. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Infernal Shrines, map number two, and the Bang Bush is ahead. The MC Academy, yeah, they got a little bit spanked on the last one. Now, they fought back in the mid game at least, but not for long, and then they got absolutely destroyed. So, I have to believe that you're addressing Hanzo somehow. Infernal Shrines is another great Hanzo map. It's, by the way, also another very good Vala map, so theoretically, a similar composition could be played by the Bang Bush. I am sure that Tai would love to play Vala again here. This is actually the map where he played, I told the story earlier, where he played Vala as pretty much the only European player when she was very, very squishy and made it work. And that was a map where he regularly did that. So right now, we are going to have a bit of a glimpse on the band pattern. Get rid of that Hanzo, boys. They get rid of Brightwing. Yeah, I mean, that's understandable too because Brightwing had such a huge impact, just a massive positive impact on the last map. No? 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 Alright, alright. All right. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, didn't, but still gets banned. Jojo is also getting eliminated. Ban that Hanzo. Or pick him. One of the two. Thank you. Thank you. Now again, bishops can play more than that, but why make your life harder than it has to be, right? So yeah, they get rid of this one. And alrighty, so with that, we get another band. This time it's Junkrat that gets eliminated. It makes perfect sense too. Now, the interesting part here is that we actually have Stukov still up, so that's a good one if you want to control the shrines a bit. Obviously, the disadvantage of running Stukov is that he self stuns himself every single time that he throws out the lurking arm. He could play with Deckard Kane, which has been played a lot. We still have Anduin available on the support side. Blaze is up. Rega as well. Okay, so it gets taken immediately. And now one of the bigger questions I would assume is what are we getting in the early picks in regards to damage? I guess we're going to talk side laners first. Leo is up and so is Blaze. So that's already two fantastic picks that you could go for. Depends a bit on what you want to focus on. The Haka in theory also up, but they go for the Hogger. Okay, so Hogger is the first one that gets locked in. And here comes Tychus for bishops. I would still not be too sad if we got to get a Vala now. So, yeah. Vala would be kind of neat. Infernal Shrines is a map where Vala can totally shine. And this is also one of the few maps where you can more or less play every single build that she offers. But if Tai really prefers to go multi-shot, then this is just a fantastic map for it. Auto textile would of course work too. Side laners is expected. Get it dressed. So we got Blaze. He's giving you the stain on the shrine. He has the AOE. Has the ul to save people. So if you're going to go for that layer defense. Ooh, layer defense, by the way. Tyrael. Yeah, Tyrael could be played again, too. Both teams would really benefit from him here as well. So might even be banned now that I think about it. But there's other heroes that are really good at the front line on Infernal Shrines. I mean, Diablo. Lots of stun opportunities. Garrosh works as well, of course. Nuburag is up. But I don't really think that one of the team is... is uh, I mean, the blue... T the red team could honestly go for a Nuburag here if they want it. But with Diablo still up, um, the other more hit point heavy tanks. Kind of would assume that. But then again, to be fair, I think a Nuburag for the red team wouldn't be too bad. Okay, so Anduin gets banned out. Yeah, for a second I was honestly wondering if they're going for Leo as a side laner, and then I realized that they already have Blaze, so that's highly unlikely. But Anduin is obviously a huge killjoy whenever you have Leo, because every single Entomb that he throws out, Anduin just simply sits there, zip, and saves the day. Diablo, as expected, comes in, and we have Stukov, indeed, as our support, which means that Ty is still waiting for his hero. 
I, I can't help it. I want to see Vala again. I think he played a fantastic Vala on the first map. I think this is a good map for her too. So seeing Vala again here would be fun. I would definitely enjoy that. Maev gets taken by the red team. And we get May. Come on, bear with May. Final pick. Tie for the blue team. Infernal Shrines. They need more damage. They don't have enough here. Technically, Tracer is also up. Something that we should probably point out too. But given the fact that they have Infernal Shrines ahead of them, Vala would work. Got to be a little bit careful, of course, whenever Mayev makes an engage. There's a couple of things that you definitely have to watch out for if you go for a squishy. May with her ice wall can set things up as well. But it is Falstead. They go for Falstead instead. They got a global now. Map number two in the best of two series here. So guys, let's see if the blue team can win it with a 2-0 or if the Master Slash Academy is going to be able to put a point on the board and tie this one up. Bang Bush against Masters Clash Academy. Left side of the map. Henning on Stukov. Bishops on Tychus. We got Tai on Falstead. Skok on Diablo. And Swarm Grotta on Hogar. Right side of the map. The red team. Come on, Bear on May. With the heat transfer on level 1. We got Virus on Blaze. And Nagrom on Rega. Panda Colada is playing Sylvanas. And Cookie is playing Mayev in this second game of the series. Now, once again, the quick reminder that this is all a best of two. So, this is the final map of that series. And, yeah, for the Bang Bush, there's two points, obviously, in the making. If they are able to win this one, they get three points. But if the Master Slash Academy takes map number two, then uh, it would be one point for each team. And they are very eager to at least get one, it seems. They're not only getting a kill against Diablo, but they're also taking down Stukov. And they made a move for Swam Grotta and Tai. So a very successful mid lane brawl for the MC Academy. Good for them. Yeah, it's not too bad. That was actually a very, very nice start. Now, you gotta follow up on this, of course. You have a bit of a leading experience that you can use maybe with an early level 4, maybe with an early level... Hello? Okay, get another one? Damn! That was clutching. He has to head out. He needs help now. So, they are losing some hit points on the wall, too. Kudos to Sylvanas. Always neat when she can push. And there's not a lot of defense happening. But the MC Academy is coming out swinging. I like it. They're being super aggressive here. And that's exactly what they should try and do. Try and put their mark onto the game. Run the momentum and take the initiative instead of reacting to the blue team. So until now, they've done a great job here. Then again, we're only two minutes in. One and a half. <laughs> so shouldn't probably call it just yet. But in the early game on Infernal Shrines, it's all about your experience, right? Because the objective centers around level 7 talents usually. Unless we have a ton of kills early on. And you can also try and make the play for the double camp. Which they've already done. But the grenade is putting an end to my F. So good kill by Tychus. Bishops locks that in. Now, the birdie is dead. False dead dropped. So, uh, they still counter with a kill topside. Now, we got three kills to one. And still that eh, half-level lead. Maybe not quite. But they're still ahead in experience. So, the MC Academy is doing a decent job here. If it continues at pace, it's going to be a fun game over the shrines. For sure. Seems at least now a lot more competitive than what we witnessed on the first map. First objective is spawning at the top. Just got announced. So, yep, that's where the first shrine is. Rega already down at the bottom of the map. And Sylvanas dies. It's kind of funny, by the way. Nagrom is now playing support for the team. And it's just this internal role swap that he has going on for himself. He's able to escape too, which is kind of crazy. So it's a little bit weird because for Nagrom it's an interesting development. He started out as a main tank and was a main tank for the entire time. Then he flew with team to Miami and since they needed a sub, uh, a sub player. But he played support for them and he did incredibly well. And ever since then for the MC Academy we sometimes see him in the support role. We sometimes see him, most of the time we see him as a main tank. But he is very very good as a support player and he's showcased that several times now so it's kind of cool to see that he's flexible enough 
to adjust a little bit to whatever the team needs. If they have a sub that they need, he can always, you know, move roles and then still have a big impact there. So now we're gonna figure out if he can maybe lead them to victory on this. But as it stands, as the only level 7 talent for the MC Academy, so that's already good news. And it should give them a lead on uh, the stacks. But <laughs> with the Torga just ping-ponging around here at the top, they are dead even. They're trying to go for a kill on Diablo though, and that might even work out for them. Skog is low, and he goes down. But they might lose me. No, Camembert gets out. Okay, sweet. So Camembert is able to make it out of the fight. Now, in addition to that, Beatrice is getting completely body blocked and doesn't stand a chance there. Yeah, that was a hard body block. He did not move at all. Completely surrounded. Solid Warcraft 3 surround right there. Everybody just moving in, blocking his path of retreat off. And he was just jiggling and wiggling and could not get past them. Three kills to four. And they have to give up the first objective as it seems. Yeah, Blaze is back, but they're already too far behind. <laughs> and Skok was threatening my F2. Couldn't get the kill, though. Now down in the mid lane, some damage at least done. If you have Sylvanas, then of course there's always some comeback potential. The bigger question is how much can this Punisher do? Nicely baited over the wall. Again, if you're a little bit newer to the game, always make sure that once the opponent gets the Punisher, you move behind the wall. Attack the Punisher with range damage, being an ability or auto attack, so that it gets vision of you. And then it will trigger the jump over the wall, which makes it much, much easier for you to defend against it. The last thing you want to do is trigger that jump in front of the wall. Then your opponent is going to get way more value. So something for the newbies to remember. But either way, we got Diablo already taken down and Henning is also dead. That's a double. Make it a triple, baby. Seems like we're gonna get a dead fruit fl No? Okay. Oh, Swamp Karota! They go for Tigers instead, and they get him. Okay, they couldn't get the first one, but they still move in and take Tigers down. So now they have level 10, they've pulled ahead in experience. We get mind control, by the way, on Sylvana, so good for her. And, yep, there's another. Seven kills, two, three now. Nicely done. Halfway down the hit points on the uh, fort. A bit of a save for the Ancestral. Blaze is already on his way down to the bottom of the map. You gotta be careful here. But there's no level 10 yet for the Bang Bush. So that's a bigger problem that they're facing. And the bird is flying bot side to deal with the experience that Blaze is pushing in. Now we got the Shockwave now. Tigers also has his ult. So that's a huge boon for any upcoming shrine fight. Once that he can transform straight into Odin. And use that. But then again, no ult yet for Stukov. Come on, give him the slap, baby. Nah, went for the shove. All right, all right. It's gonna stiff arm them a little bit here. Terra and dead. <laughs> the disc, the panic disc to the bottom right here. It's like ah, trying to somehow escape, but nope. Diablo just barbecued my F. Well done, please. That's how I like my melee assassin. And that's uh, another kill for them. So four kills to seven. They're still behind the experience, but they maintain that half level disadvantage. And generally speaking, that's something you can bridge. Yeah, you can definitely bridge that. Especially considering that with the first objective, they've already done damage. If they lock another one in, that would be good too. 37 stacks for Ty on this false step, by the way. Camps are now taken once again. But the next the next objective is soon coming up. That yeah. Another disc from Cookie, but he is a bit unlucky on those. That on the other hand is a nice trap. They go for Diablo first, might be able to get the kill here. Mayev looking for tethers. Can't get anything here. But another stun, and maybe now. Skog is still low. He is getting punished. There's the tether, and that should be a kill if they play their cards right. But the bird creates some space with another gust. Horga is coming in from the top. The Ancestral. Oh my god, what a clutch move by Rega. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier when I said that Nagrom has those timings down on his supports. Uh, they have a chance to go for some Grotta instead now, and Orga is down, and Diablo is also in trouble. Big barbecue by him, though, and they get a double kill as a result. 
Nicely done. Mind control is ready though. The fight continues. They're diving the fort. And they're getting a kill on May. Yeah. But check this. Just check this one out. Tura! Easy double kill from Dibbles. First Hogger died and then they got the two kills here. And they jumped in on them at the fort. Making sure that they got even more value. So now we have still the opportunity for to go for another objective. And I don't really think that the Master Slash Academy can counterplay that. The bigger issue is also that they are still down their tank. But that's the leading experience now for the Bang Bush. So, yeah. Bang Bush able to pull ahead in experience. They were trailing behind the entire game. But now they've finally taken the lead here. Now, in addition to that, there's at least a couple of camps that you can play around with. So they're going to go for that. A bit of a stun. Ooh, even Odin. Alright. Didn't have to use it during the shrine fight. So now Odin gets popped by bishops. They really want that fort. And I'm pretty sure they're going to get it. Mind control against Yav. That's easy, by the way. I mean, he was never the smartest in the bunch to begin with. So, yeah, mind controlling Diablo, that's not really a challenge. But he's dead. Had his souls together, though, so he'll be back. And we still have them playing around the Punisher a bit, but it seems like this fort is gonna fall. Yep! That one's gone. So, the fort is gone. Up at the top, this one is fairly low, too, so that's a big chance. 37,000 damage for Tychus. And 32,000 for uh, Sylvanas. Oh yeah, kills all over the place. There's not a single hero in the bunch that hasn't died yet. Everybody died at least once. Diablo is getting a bit murdered at the front. Has been the punching ball of this game. But since the top lane gets abandoned, that means that the Bang Bush has now a chance to take another fort down. Which they, of course, accept easily. Yeah, Vader is trying to slow that down. Yeah, have fun with that. That's just not happening. Instead, he might actually be forced to bunker up. Nah. He can't slow him further. The fight at the bottom of the map is still ongoing. So that's where the Master Slash Academy is trying to get at least some counter damage on structures. It's not really working out for them. They're trying to go for Diablo. But the tether wasn't good enough to yank him in. Some extra stacks now for the birdie too. So yes, false dead is currently stacking it up. And sitting at 87 on his level 1. Diablo is also trying to get them uh, back. There's level 16 for the two teams. Uh, full totem build for uh, Rega. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for the real fight to happen over the camp here. And it seems like they might give this one up. The disc this time connects. There's the gust from the side. The shockwave and the ancestral to save my F. But Rega doesn't have enough ancestrals to save the entire team. Vedas in particular is way low and he dies. Cookie is now also in trouble and the wall stun is going to be the end of him. They're getting the triple kill too as they're making a move for May. So yep, that's three heroes down. The birdie trying to fly in to help out with the next kill. They're taking Sylvanas. And I guess we could look at a five-man wipe now. Since Nagrom is unlikely to escape from this. And as I say it, he might just be able to get away after all. Yep. But still, very, very successful attack, of course. As you can see here. I mean, that corridor just was the end of them. They lost way too many heroes in there. And now that the fort has been destroyed, they're trying to go for uh, Rega still, and they're still chasing him. And I guess we're looking at a stagger death. At this point, he's just locked into a corner, and he has no chance of escaping anymore. So Rega is down. That means a stagger death against the red team. He wasted a lot of their time, but there was nothing else to do anyways. Falsa was pushing the bot at uh, the top lane out. It's 12 kills to 9. They have now one and a half level advantage. They took the bottom fort. So every single fort is destroyed, and the next shrine is already announced. It's gonna pop up in 14 seconds, so they have to wait for Rega to be back. Whereas top left. Yeah. That's the end of the camp. So this one is gonna push through the top lane now. The good news, obviously, is that the red team at least got their own. But Falstead could stay top. They have a, quite a lot of heroes, actually, that are sitting topside. I don't think that Ty is going to die here. Yeah, if the only re the only way that you can take the bird down is if you are getting a good mind control in. 
Hana Colada is, by the way, very, very low. Seems a bit like a bait to me. Yeah, and that's a dead birdie, isn't it? Nice. Come on, bear. With a flank, there's the gas, but that is a dead birdie. So, yeah, he's down. I suppose that they're going to go to 39 on the shrine, and then they're going to wait and hope that they can allow Falstead to get back. He has obviously a global. They're pushing the bot lane out a bit further. That forces the heroes at the top to hearth back. But, yep, there's 37, 38, 39. And now they're just going to leave it be, wait a little bit, and then finish it off with a grenade on bishops, for example, once that the red team is making a play for it. Just to give Falstead more time to be back. Um... That only works if Henning doesn't die, and yeah, so now it's getting a bit awkward because now you have 50 seconds until Stukov is back, so you're in even more trouble. Top lane has to be dealt with. They're going to lose the bottom forward, but this got a bit cringy. It was a really nice play initially, but it only works if you don't lose your support player. So they're taking it. Punisher is claimed. Ice Wall is out. Mind control on Diablo again. Punisher is already on the move. Diablo dies too. The hell is happening? All of a sudden, they're just losing heroes all over the place. And the Punisher should be easily defended. The next problem is that somebody needs to deal with the top lane. And that's what Diablo and Forsadan are doing. They're still chasing Svamgrotta here. And that's a dead... F what is happening? Like, they're just feeding into them one after another. And yes, the Punisher is most likely going to take the wall down, but that's the only thing that he really can do. Common Bear gets attacked, but they're still absolutely Gucci. We're waiting for level 20 talents at this point. And the blue team is now behind in kills. Both are going to get level 20 around the same time. The only advantage that they honestly have is that fort in the mid lane that they took down. I mean, that's the only thing. So the Master Slash Academy is not out of this yet. They're saving the keep at the bottom of the map. The fight up here, though, that's a different matter. Level 20 talents on both sides. Cookie! Yep, they go for bishops. And... Yeah, stiff-armed bishops. Cookie really, really wants the kill, but doesn't get it. Rega doesn't have to pop his ancestral either, though, so not even a cooldown was wasted in this situation. Dark Lady's call is by now in. The Farseer's blessing. And, yeah, it's a wild one. That game looked like it's a done deal, and now it is just crazy. They're taking the fort in the middle too, Sylvana's value. Another ice ball, but okay, too far away. Eliminating Falset for a couple of seconds out of the fight, but nothing else that they can do with it. Nice, nice ult from uh, Sylvana's though, and they get the kill. They get, no, oh, there it is, Tigers is down. They get the kill against Tigers. Tigers is dead, Henning! He's dead as well. Rega is down. They look for another stun against Ty. Can't get that. Oh my god. The chaos. The absolute chaos. Full on fiesta plays here at times. Seems like Sylvanas is going to die. Nope. But Blaze gets dropped and come on Bear is also low. False dead flying somewhere. <laughs> and it's enough. Ty gets the kill, bridges the short gap here, flies out and gets the kill. 30 kills in total now, 15 to 15, and they are aiming for the bottom keep, and I think they should get it. Ah, well, Sylvanas and Maeve are both up. I'm not sure they can get it, it's just three heroes, and they don't have a minion wave. And Rega is back in 18 seconds. There's the mind control. Yeah, good gust idea here from Ty, but that one was telegraphed and Cookie reacted immediately. Now his disc also didn't hit, so that doesn't help either. But yes, they're going to save to keep. <laughs> wild, absolutely wild game. 63,000 for bishops, the damage output. 56,000 for Falstead and for Sylvanas. Alright, so the next objective is in the middle of the map. Camps are up, some. Shaman camps particularly. So there's a chance that they're now making a move for this one. And steal that away. Or at least trap around it. Which you could do. Yeah, But I guess they gave up that idea. Not really a, an area where they want to fight in. Instead they're just moving over to the right side. And start to take their own camp down. So yeah. Let's take that quickly. And have a bit of a look there. Alrighty, so down to the bottom of the map. Vedras is still pushing this one out. And 
And yep. There's the shrine. Activated and popping up. This should be the last battle. One way or another. I mean, we'll see. So yeah, there's already a play with the shockwave. My control, Ice Wall, isolating the frontliners. Trying to go for Svamkarotta in particular, but they can't. And the ancestral healing. But what a wind tunnel. And Camon Bear is dead. Camon Bear is down. Neat. Five versus four. And they are on the run. My F dies. Blaze is dead. Well done. The triple kill. Great play from the Bang Bush. And now the big opportunity. They're going for a follow-up kill on Rega. He's down. The keep, obviously, just a stepping stone in their path towards the core. And they're going to end the game right here. Unless Sylvanas pops off completely. But a one versus five man defense is highly unlikely here. The Panda Colada is on the run. Here comes Diablo. And that's the team wipe. As they drop everybody, focus their attention on the core. And it seems like we're looking at a 2-0 victory for the Bang Bush against the Masters Clash Academy here on the first play day of the group stage. The playoffs, if you so want, of the Masters Clash. GG. And well played. Nicely done.